So we were playing with layer adjustments, direct adjustments to the selection or to the layer. And what we're going to do is change it from being the way it was when we brought it in from our, our source asset to fixing the, the lighting and the coloring on it before we cut it out. So I'm going to demonstrate all of that. And I'll do it on a duplicate. Just so you can see the changes I'm making. And the first one we did was levels. We did that right before I ended the last video. And we talked about the midterm slider. So I'm going to push this a little bit brighter. So we get a little bit more information in those midtones. Just like the background has more information in its midtones. The other thing we can do with levels that I didn't show in the last video is you can actually limit the highlights and the shadows. So if I feel like that highlight is just a little too strong for this condition, I can take the white slider on the output levels and push it in. And what that does is it's the opposite of the top. The top exaggerates the highlights. This will limit it. It means that the lightest light will now be only like 80% white, <laughs> you know. And it kind of dulls everything a little bit. So maybe I'll split the difference right there. I can also limit the shadows, though I don't think I need to with this. And if I want to goose the shadows a little bit, I can just use the, the shadow slider, which got weakened a little with my midtones. So let's say I'm happy with that. If you ever want to see if you liked that change, you can always just do Command Z. And you can toggle between your history, right? So it came in like this, and then we used levels, and we made it like that. A small change. Next, we're going to use the image adjustment for the direct adjustment of color balance. This one is my favorite. It's pretty dramatic because it's the temperature of the lighting. And this is obviously yellow lighting. This is obviously bluish lighting. So I'm going to start with the midtones. I'm always going to preserve the luminosity, and I'm going to push the yellow push away from yellow, push towards blue. If I go too far, though, it's going to get a little too dark and too magenta, right? So then I can also push towards cyan. And then I can decide if I think it needs to go more magenta or more green. And I think maybe just a tiny bit magenta. Next, I'm going to go to the shadows because the shadows, this is where you can lose content. If I push it towards the blues, see how now it just goes to shadow, right? So I'm going to be softer this way and a little bit stronger with the cyans then maybe a little bit with the magentas okay and then I'm going to go to highlights and I'm going to do the opposite of what I did for shadows so if I went towards blue a little bit in the shadows I might go towards yellow a little bit here and if I went towards cyan a little bit with the shadows with the highlights I might go back towards the reds just a little bit so that I'm sure to have a more rounded kind of color spectrum around these forms. And then I can always do Command Z, and you can see what a big difference that was. Right, just using levels and color balance. The last is hue saturation. I always use those three, and those are the only three I'm going to require that you know and that you use. Hue saturation is for big color changes which don't really make sense if I'm trying to make it believable. But this saturation slider is very helpful. Hue is the, the spectrum of the color. Saturation is the intensity of the color. So if I want to make it look a little bit more intense like this sky, I'm going to up that saturation. If I up it too much, it's going to look really wild and not very believable. But I can go about 20, 20 spots or so. If I go down, it's just going to make it grayscale or really, really grayed out, which doesn't match my background. So maybe about there. And then you can see the difference that makes, right? It's very subtle. If you zoom in, you can see kind of the intensity of the color change just a little bit. All right. Now that I've done that, it's going to be easier for me to cut it out because it's going to be more forgiving. So there's a few ways. I have my tablet. I like my tablet because it makes this job easier. I don't ever want to zoom in more than 200%. <laughs> so 
So let's do the maximum. Hit Command Plus until you're at 200% in, and then I can hold down my space bar to kind of zoom around. And then if I use my tablet, I can get a pretty accurate cutout. But if I go more than 200%, I'm just wasting time because the human eye wouldn't see the difference. Right? And then I cut it out. Let me turn off that background one. So that's kind of my cutout. The problem is it's so clean at default settings for this background that it will look like it's a cut out piece of paper. Right? So to blend it a little bit before I've done anything, going to deselect, but look at the difference. This is from the duplicate I had, the difference between the way it was brought in and what those direct adjustments did. And then these were the direct adjustments I tried before, and I like these ones better. So very helpful. So now for the first time, we're going to do a change to the settings of the lasso. And what we're going to do is we're going to add just a one pixel feather. What a one pixel feather does is it just radiates out and softens one pixel from wherever you select. So it gives you a little bit of a buffer. It's like a slight soft scissors. So if I cut out and then delete, now you'll see that it's softened. Instead of cutting between the edges of pixels, it kind of softens it out. And because this is organic, I don't need to worry about getting every little detail. I can even just kind of make up my own shape as long as I'm cutting into the rock and not leaving any sky. Right. So I'm going to show you multiple ways to select and delete besides just using the lasso, but the lasso is always your most basic and most controllable option. And if you put a one pixel feather on, still going to look pretty sharp to the human eye, but it will blend it a little bit. If you go more than one pixel, sometimes at this resolution, I might even go to three pixels, but that would only be for these background elements, which you expect to have some softness anyway. So you can see how that's starting to look pretty good. The places you really have to use the lasso and don't really have other options is when the pixels are very similar between the thing you want and the thing you're cutting out. And then you can hit Command D to deselect, right? And then I can move around. Now here, the thing I want looks pretty different than the sky behind it. So I can try the magic wand. I would recommend the magic wand instead of any of these others. Because these others are made to be fast, but they're going to make lots of errors. Right? So I just teach the magic wand and the lasso for, for intro. So magic wand, you have the control of the tolerance. 32 is the default in Photoshop. We're going to keep it there. And you have the, the option of having it be contiguous or not. We want it to be contiguous. Otherwise, it would select every bit of yellow light in that. So I'll show you, if I don't click contiguous, then it's also going to select things in the mountain. And if I delete those, then I lose things in the mountain. I don't want that. So if I, un if I check contiguous, it means that the pixels have to be similar to each other and touching. And then if I click on the sky, you can see that it does a fairly good job. Right? It won't get everything. It will leave little debris behind. But it did a pretty good job cutting out that top. And then it's easy enough, though you can see that it's not softened at all. <laughs> I'll show you how you can fix that. But then it's easy enough to just go around with your lasso and get rid of these outliers. So that's using the magic wand. I think I can get away with using the magic wand here and deleting using the magic wand here. If you want to add to your selection, you can hold down Shift keep adding to the magic wand, but if you go too far, right, it's like Icarus flying too close to the sun. You can also combine your tools. So I can use my lasso with the one pixel feather, hold down option, and delete away from the magic wand selection because it bit away a little bit too much away from that, that side of the mountain. 
And same thing here. All right, and I can hold down shift on the magic wand and then just grab all of this that I know I want to get rid of anyway. And then I hit delete. And there might be little stray bits. Right? So I'm going to show you how we can clean those up. These little stray pixels. So the magic wand is faster, but it, it leaves a mess that you have to clean up. Whereas the, the lasso on its own, very, very clean. So I'm just going to finish this off with the lasso pretty quickly. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. This is why I love using the tablet. I can kind of draw little rocky bumps. Smooth it out where I want to smooth it out. And I don't need to be too zoomed in to do it. And at any time, I can kind of just chunk it like that, deselect. And then when I need to be closer about it, I can zoom in and get the edge a little bit better. And especially those of us who are new to using the tablets, this is a great way to practice it. You'll find it's a lot easier than, than doing the same thing with the mouse. And you'll only get better. So now, how do I check that it's a clean sky? I use my magic wand and I click with contiguous on the empty space around it. And that will show me all of the little debris. Now, how can I soften the edge a tiny bit and get rid of some of the debris at the same time? This is under the selection options. So it's called select and mask. If I click on that with the magic wand, this takes quite a bit of processing. So this takes a little bit too long in Photopea, which is browser-based, but they do have an option like this. They call it refine edge or refine selection. It brings up this option. The first thing you want to do with these properties for the selection is to have remember settings clicked. That will save you time. Then what you're going to do is you're going to increase your radius. Ah, what happened? It died. And did I ever save? I don't think I did. No! So, good lesson. Good lesson. Yes, always save your work because what is mine named? Even though it recovered it, it's not named with my name yet, right? I had never saved it as a PSD file. So that's a good lesson. Refine the edge does take a lot of processing, you know, can be, can be hard on your computer. Good. So easy enough. What do we do? It didn't actually take me back that far. It was just before I used the magic wand on this. But before I do anything, what am I going to do? I'm going to save as, I'm going to type my name and a description of this assignment. So assignment one, um, I'm calling this Surreal Desert Landscape. Just to the desktop as a Photoshop file. And then I'm going to verify it's there by hitting function F11. And there it is. I'm going to mark it green. All right, so what was I saying about softening? So we used the feather for the lasso tool, right? One pixel feather that made it easier to cut things out. It kind of softened them a little bit so they weren't too sharp. Now you have to re remember that you did that because the next time you use the lasso, it will automatically be a one pixel feather. So always check your tool settings. But I was talking about the magic wand. We were using it with contiguous turned on at 32 which is a good default. If you want it to be, to select more things, you know, be more kind of careless, you can make that number higher, like 55. And if you want it to be pickier, you can make it smaller, like 11. And then it will be, you know, so 32 is, is like a third. Pixels within a third <laughs> similarity to the where you click, it's going to select. And then you can hold down shift and add to that. Okay, now I'm going to try this again, the select and mask. And the radius of five, a feather of only maybe one and a half pixels. 
And that's it. Just radius and, fe and 